Okay, this is another test run to see how this is going to work. Trying out multiple windows, so I expect it to work terribly. Uh, today we're going to be looking at alt parking, a place where you can stuff your alts that you're not using to make some extra money out of them. I'm going to use the GW2 efficiency site to see how much money we make from doing it. Uh, probably won't be a ton. This is sort of a way to get use out of character slots you might have purchased for reasons. So we'll start that. We will go back to the game and we'll begin. Uh, the first spots I've used for quite a while now are in uh, Biora Marches. There's a couple different areas with chests. This one is up here over a forest of a thousand voices. There's another one just above the cascades, which we'll get to in a second. There's a chest up on the ledge. Okay, prototype. Jump down. Hit the Raven's Lock if you have the mastery for it. Or there's usually people parked out here if you don't. Grab the chests, port back to the top, and you can see he made 58 eternal ice shards and it's a smattering of other random things. The largest cluster is this one, the one up here above the Frostborn Cascades, you can do these on the same character if I have uh, way too many characters, so I don't. This is my squad invite character. Uh, it's why you can slash SQ join on bar, because there is a character with that name. Uh, you can join anyone's squad by typing in any character name on their account, so that's helpful. We have a large chest up there, we have a medium chest, and if you drop down here, there's a small chest that can either appear on this ledge, or down here, or if it's not there, it's way off in the distance, and usually not worth getting because it's about three ice shards. Then if you head east, there's a Norn chest. Pop your position rewinder, hop down, and depending on the map you're on, there's either a chest right here that can have a veteran spawned over there. There's a chest right here that doesn't have a veteran spawned. There's a chest over here, or the chest is at the bottom of this little waterfall. Deposit everything, and we're on to the next one, which is just a large chest that has a small chest way off in the distance that I never bother with, but is available. I am on my laptop again, so my loading times are a bit all over the place. Pop the large chest, hit deposit all. And then we move to the next area which used to be once per day per character and was fantastic, and then they nerfed it. That is the New Kining City Jumping Puzzle. It is a source of Jade Runestones. It was the best source of Jade Runestones. Uh, now you can only do it once a day. Uh, the price of those has significantly increased as a result. Uh, this character holds most of my super adventure box currency. Uh, I need to actually do that this year because apparently I forgot to buy the moat machine for it. So I cannot get uh, baubles. Uh, since you can't get the runestones unlimited there anymore, there are four chests in Echo Vault that you can either 
have one character gather, or there's three distinct locations you can park in. This one is up here over Mori Village, south of the Quarry Forelands. Uh, it's not difficult to get up to. There is an elite that can spawn there, which is why I tend to have something with stealth. Uh, in this case, it's Mass and Viz. But you hop down, open the chest, pop back up. You get your Jade Dream Stone and random gems. Onto the second location. Which is a tree overlooking Landry's Hope. The last chest was over in this direction. But once again, a position rewinder, probably the most handy thing in existence. You can glide over to the chest, watch the phoenix shoot the beam off into nowhere, and pour it back up to the tree. Uh, you can also use a character with stealth if you want to park over on the tree branches over there. Uh, it sometimes aggroes you before you can do anything. Now we're on to the third spot. which has two chests. This is up here above the Jade Gate. I believe for the second of these chests, you have to clear the graveyard event to get access to the horrifically broken mini dungeon that's down here. I think it's considered the same location even though it's uh, far apart in actuality. Pop the chest, activate the rewinder, pop down, don't die on the tree branches, mount up into the cave, hit this chest, and we're back to the top of the trees. Uh, the next place I park is in the Crystal Oasis. There's actually a couple spots here. Uh, this is the Sanctum of Nabka. It's the end of the jumping puzzle with the gins. Here it is on the map. It's west of Destiny's Gorge. Uh, you have to jackal around a bunch of different portals. It gives you mostly trade contracts. Uh, it can give recipes for war beasts boots, as you see right here. It also drops rare items uh, somewhat regularly. Not great return, but if you need trade contracts, it's a decent way to get 15 or 20 a day. It also gives you the sunset jewelry recipes. And then we head to the current most relevant spots. Uh, we have the Skywatch Archipelago large chess. If you are working on Secrets of the Obscure Legendary Armor, you will become very familiar with these chest locations. There's a whole bunch of them scattered around. This one's on an island off to Wizard's Ascent. There's one in Garenhof. They're all over. Uh, you need significant amounts of coins. And each chest will give you a few coins. There's chests in all three of the explorable Secrets of the Obscure maps, and you need many thousands of them, and you'll get a few.
few per chest. Uh, they'll also drop all of the SOTO rare item sets. So you can finish those collections while you're doing it. On this account, I believe I have six characters parked at these chests. Then as I do metas, you can get the one inside the wizard's tower, and then five from the other maps, uh, as there's four, I believe, scattered throughout. Uh, Amnitas and Naos. We're just hitting buttons on the chest. I believe it's between 8 and 12 unusual coins apiece. Uh, I'm sitting on 3,300. I think you need 1500 per set and then they're also used to buy recipes uh, one thing you notice when you have too many characters uh, the game will forget what character was loaded in last and it'll set them in a different order than you would like them to be in I'm not sure exactly what causes that or how to fix it and from reading the bug forums and other searches online, it's just a thing that happens and no one knows why. Uh, after I collect a couple rows worth of weapons, I will blow them up with a silver fed usually, but you don't have to do that every day. The, the mats are just going to sit in the bank or inventory or mat storage. I do double up with some of my characters, like there's ones parked out here that will be holding all of my ascended weapons to blow up for research notes, or this character has stuff like the shards of Jormag, um, weird minis that I have no idea what to do with, uh, black lion chest minis that I have already made all of the resulting materials from, uh, scribe items for guild hall decorating that I'm not currently decorating. It helps to use characters that are doing that to just sit them out in the wild and get some use out of them besides just extra bag space. There are a lot of different places you can park alts. Uh, I don't park one at the Matriarch, even though she's worth a chest every day because I just run a character there and do it uh, when I'm doing my daily meta rounds, if I remember. I don't do this every day because I'm terrible at remembering sometimes, and it's just a very low priority. The only thing I'm really getting out of this that I actually could use are the unusual coins and Unless you're heavily doing rifting and convergences every day, uh, you're probably going to need more of the Cryptus Essence than you will the Unusual Coins by the time you get around to making the armor. This should be the last Skywatch chest we have. And then there's a couple other random chests around the world that we'll check out. If you mess up these buttons, nothing happens. You don't get shocked off the platforms or anything. Uh, this chest up here in Stargaze Ridge. One of the, a couple of the other ones are over here in the Jade Bot area. Uh, there's actually two above that, one slightly above it and one significantly above it up in the clouds. Uh, you can usually get teleports to friends up there. A lot of people are parking at these chests and logging in once a day. Our next stop 
is at the end of a jumping puzzle. Andraconis Bonds. Uh, this is worth a couple map currencies along with your rare items. Get it. A piece of gear. Rare weapon. Uh, some unbound magic. Which we can blow up into bags that are okay. You don't get great returns on them. You do get returns on them. Or you can buy tributes if you're making Gen 2 weapons. Get map currency, which you can use to blow up for unbound magic or if you're still needing ascended gear. Uh, most of the maps will buy some of those. From here we go to... dry top. There's a small little garden that you can farm every hour. That you can alternate bounty and volatility sickles. I tend to just stick with the volatility at this point. Uh, unless I'm doing ascended, ga ascended gardening in my home instance, in which case I'll use bounty or on flax nodes or seaweed nodes, a bounty is better. Uh, these, the actual difference between a carrot and a bounty carrot is small. Quickness does make you gather faster. I didn't put on gathering tools for that. You'll notice the gathering speed of certain tools is significantly faster. Uh, there we got some a small amount of unbound magic and a few fire orchid blossoms. And because the tool I'm using has a leather worker glyph on it, some thick leather. Uh, thick leather is currently slightly better than volati volatility, but it's not going to make a huge difference. Don't you? Going out and buying some of those won't make a huge difference right off. It'll take many, many, many gatherings, and if you're not going to gather many, many, many times, uh, just stick with whatever your tools came with. So if you grab the VM tools, use those. Uh, I had a consortium harvesting sickle from when it was first released, so I skin all of my tools with that. And then I had both unbound and volatile tools. The unbound are faster. So I use the Unbound skin with Volatile Glyphs. I also use Glyph of the Watch Knight, which is slightly better than Volatile, but at this point, the difference is minor. And again, it's not worth buying the extra tools just to have the Glyph. And then one of my favorite places to forget exists is the Secret Garden in Mount Maelstrom. Uh, once you do the Leaf of Kudzu Precursor collection chain, you get access to a little garden. There are a few of these crops. I believe it is peppers, strawberries, and carrots that have a slightly higher return with a bounty sickle. I have stopped caring about that again. I'll use the volatility because it's just easier. A herald quickness is ridiculous, and if I could go back and do it all over again, I would currently have uh, heralds parked anywhere that I have to gather materials because they are by far the fastest at doing it. They have the least upkeep for quickness. Uh, it's just passive. It'll last the entire time when it runs out. You don't have to worry about refreshing it. The only thing you have to worry about is not hitting F too fast in the secret garden because if you do that, 
a, a cancel a harvesting attempt, you have to log out and log back in for that node, and that's almost not worth doing. We deposit all, and we head to some of the other fun random locations you can park things. Uh, I've I don't usually put anything in these spots, but I am just to show them off. So Thunderhead Peaks has a couple different node locations. You can use the same character to farm them. I put different characters there just to show where they are. First off, we have the Iron Ore nodes with a chest. We're over here to the west, southwest of our zone in spot at History's End. These are per character per day. So if you really need iron or platinum, you can stuff a character here. You can stuff all your characters here, and every single one of them can mine. I used to have four, and I was actually caring a lot about gathering money. Uh, I don't have any here now. This one is bats. We're just going to kill the bats. We'll do our ore. We're going to get... Should get 24... 21 to 24 ore, plus a few watchworks brackets out of this. Uh, these bats have a surprisingly high drop rate of tier 6 blood. They usually end up uh, with one or two per clear when I was doing it on multiple characters. Probably won't get any while I'm talking about it, but that's fine. I suggest not. If you're gonna do any of the ones that re require combat, uh, some people are out here and there's bots that'll farm these bats. Uh, I would recommend characters that can kill things fast enough uh, and also not uh, staff or great sorting or leaping or charging off of the cliffs. You can save yourself with glides or skyscale combat mounting, but it's annoying. That is the end of the ore, at least for the iron. You can follow this wall all the way around south, west, south, north, and then west to this spot where there's platinum. Uh, the bats have a Decent respawn. And they hover. They're slightly annoying. But there's also a couple safe spots to camp. You can use that ledge uh, beneath the initial bat spawn, or you can park over here. Uh, 24 iron ore, 5 watchrix brackets, no blood. And three leather off of one of the bat drops. That's not terrible. The next spot, still in Thunderhead Keep, or Thunderhead Peaks rather, is the Platinum Moor, which is guarded by Earth Elementals. If I was smart, I'd have had these characters swapped around. but it's similar to the bats. You kill slash avoid the earth elementals. While gathering platinum ore. Uh, these guys are weak. The only one that won't die in two or three hits is the vet. 
that can spawn here most of the time. It can also spawn up on the ledge behind where the first platinum ore is, and I think that's where it is today. Which means you won't run into it while you're gathering. Uh, these guys sometimes will path themselves out of existence. Uh, they'll run around in circles and then effectively not cause you any problems at all. There's a node up here before the drop down, and then there's one at the drop down. Uh, these nodes can move slightly. This is sort of the optimal spots for them. Uh, but they are not always in the exact same spots. The iron usually is. The platinum can move. Uh, it can shift slightly, or one of the nodes can spawn on the ground, and it'll be out of range of seeing it from up here. The last spot in Thunderhead Keep is the Seaweed. A seaweed has use for guild hall upgrades. Uh, this spot is not entirely safe. There's sometimes a very large elite sea creature hiding out here. Uh, it is not here today. It paths. Sometimes it spawns in a completely different part of the map and sticks to that part of the map. Uh, you will notice a lot of minor differences in map variations with node spawns. Uh, I'm sure there is a way to exploit which version of maps you end up on. I don't know how to do that. I'm not can I'm not a hundred percent sure it is a thing. So we're just going to gather a whole bunch of seaweed. 19 seaweed sells for 35 silver if you sold directly at, at this price. And it wouldn't be the worst thing. You'd lose 2 silver out of the whole deal. Uh, this character holds stacks of medallions that I keep telling myself one day I'll break down for something. Uh, it holds extra tools. Got this out of a chest and haven't tried it to see if it's any better. I have some unbound glyphs and then all the weird jade bot stuff. My old captain's airship pass that I don't use now that I have mislock. And then a million and one salvage kits that I don't ever use because I don't need to salvage and retain upgrades anymore. Uh, if there's a very rare case or two where sigils or runes actually cost more money than they get blown up for and you would use them for that. Uh, otherwise, you use them if you don't have legendary gear and you need to salvage your runes when you're upgrading exotic gear. And then moving on to the last couple spots. We have the Verdant Brink flax spot. Uh, there are a couple other flax spots. There's one in Tangled Depths. If you want to kill a bunch of small waverns, uh, since these are here's me being terrible at inventory wars. Uh, since the flax spots are per character and not per account. Unless you really want to move characters around for reasons. Uh, there's no reason not to just use the spot in Burden Brink. If you want a low effort flax farm. A Glyph of Reaping will, on I think all but one of these map setups, uh, hit all of the flax. We don't do that because we're using Bounty. I am questioning that since Glyph of Bounty gives you a pulsing buff, 
if you could activate the buff, then switch to reaping and reap all of the flowers at the same time. I haven't tested it out because I don't have a glyph of reaping, and it's kind of silly to buy it just to do that. Uh, I don't like reaping because it's... It's essentially trying to trade time for other currency, but the amount of time you save is a few seconds, and you lose significant amounts of volatile magic or possible bounty hits. Uh, this character is used to hold all sorts of random stuff I'm never going to use that has no value. Uh, the the eye trite ingots have value, but I just stuff it on here to make it future bar's problem, because future bar will know what to do. I have confidence in him. And then the last set of nodes, we're going to go back to Crystal Oasis. And we're going to hit the Rich Quartz node. Uh, there's a number of Rich Quartz nodes throughout the world. Uh, it's not as good as it once was. But it's not bad. It's up here in Glint's Legacy. This is, again... Uh, per character, not per account. So if you really need quartz, say you want a charge quartz every day, uh, you can stuff two or three characters here. Uh, the griffins are annoying because they hover. And I have no clue how to play Weaver. I just know that uh, hitting a couple of those buttons is, makes things die real fast when they are not hovering. And then the last couple spots to show off are places you might really want to know if you're working on legendary collection. Uh, for any of the Gen 2 weapons, because you will need approximately 11 trillion Elderwood, and there are some good spots for those. Uh, my favorite two are the low impact ones in Malkor's Leap. Which you can get to at Pago's Waypoint. And then Siren's Reef, which we will teleport to later. From the waypoint, you can go south. Uh, this will have potential for a whole bunch of nodes. Uh, there is sometimes an Orichalcum or Mithra Ore here. Then as you go down the the Mithril node can be moved into this building. Uh, this looks like a terrible map layout. And the enemies you'll see will either be entirely risen if the shrines are corrupted, or you'll get Earth Elementals and a Veteran Earth Elemental if the shrine has been claimed. This one is tied to Melandru, who's not even on this map. Uh, looks like our Ori is in one of the weird spots. Uh, you will learn where each is, if you spend long enough here, as these respawn every hour, uh, and are also per character, uh, you'll learn where different nodes will spawn. So there's Mithril up here in the rocks. Some of the spots are just unfun to get to, but or there's a rich mithril. I believe that's in the jumping puzzle. It's not. Actually, this isn't a terrible spot for any of this. Usually, you don't get the rich mithril and the ori right next to each other. Uh, there are a couple of vents here for different collections. They end up visiting this spot quite a bit. Uh, 
it does make for a quick little, I don't know, you can get 40 or 50 resources from it per character per hour. Uh, if you need the number, it's great. Here's the, I believe this is ancient. That chest is underneath. Sometimes there is, are different. I think Omnom berries spawn here. Uh, there are a couple pepper nodes. This one shifted everything from the risen side to the elemental side. Which does make it easier if you're just going to spawn in to the elemental side. If you spawn into the elemental side and you see all of the nodes, uh, don't really bother going over to the Orion side. There's usually very little over there if everything's on this side. Uh, you'll you'll learn how the you'll you'll learn how it all works, but every map has its nodes set up slightly different. Every version of every map, and then uh, at certain points. When maps close and open and you get booted to different ones as you log in, you'll start seeing the patterns real quick. You can generally tell, okay, if there's a node up on the hill directly east of the lumber, then there's not going to be that same node off the bottom of this cliff. If the Omnom berries are up where they were, they're not going to be over on the risen side, and so on. And then the last spot is in our Season 3 Portal Tome in Siren's Landing. Uh, while you're here, if you need pearls, there are a bunch of uh, the Orion oysters spawned. But this is another quick note, another quick wood spawn. There's usually one in this spot. If it's not there, then the top area is overloaded. There can be an oyster up on that structure. It looks like there's not, which means there's another one out in the water. This node, I think, is always here. I think there's always one on the beach and possibly two. And then there are between four and seven that can spawn here. Like there's one that can spawn here. Uh, depending on the map, there's up to three on this section. Which can be here. One in between this section of trees. One over here by this tree. One over here by these trees. There's always a once per day chest up here. And then as you come east from that direction, there can be two trees spawned in this little passage, and then up to three trees in this clearing. One here, and then two up on the north side of this. On a good run, you can get 30 logs. Uh, this was 30 combined between the two, so not the greatest. But you can do this every day, and these ones you can do every hour per character. Uh, it's, it's why wood hasn't completely shattered everyone's hopes and dreams of ever making Gen 2 legendaries, uh, because you can farm theoretically infinite amounts of it if necessary. The last question that I have an answer for is, what can we do with other alts that we're not parking anywhere? And I can show you what I use mine for. Uh, I don't have a Cryptus Essence Mule on this character, or on this account rather, because I have max uh, trade skill item storage material storage, and then uh, max bank. Uh, if you don't have that, you and you're working on the new legendary armor, it's 
probably a thing you will have at some point if you're not directly making the melt essences. Uh, I have a character that, if I remember to do key farms, will do key farms. Otherwise, it just holds things that you can't do lists and hit delete on. Anything you have to type a name in, uh, I'm just not going to do. So it goes on a character that gets deleted once I farm a key with it or its bags get full. And then there's Bag Space Extender, who is just a Bag Space Extender. She sits with four 18 slot bags and a starter backpack. And in this case, it just holds mats. Uh, one day I'll do things with Shards of Glory. One day I'll sell quartz crystals. And then uh, Lucent crystals are terrible the way they have designed those. I think I've talked about it before. Uh, they're awful. They take up way too much space. You have You get way too many of them when you salvage mats they're pointless they're purposeless i don't know why they implemented them the way they did uh, coarse sand makes an infusion and then does uh, guild hall upgrades it is surprisingly valuable i believe yeah it's a few gold a stack uh elderwood always need Mithril ingots always need. Bolts of silk don't really always need. And then at the time, I I was salvaging stuff and just needed to dump materials. Every now and then, I'll go through, grab raw materials, craft them down, take the refined materials, put them on there. It, they're worth more on the trading post as raw materials usually, but I make research notes out of them and actually use them for things. This is my alt guild bank. Just hold stacks of things. But my alt account needs luck and magic finds, so it's been blowing up my unid gear. We're sort of just waiting for a uh, Guild Wars 2 Efficiency's farming calculator to update at this point. It's telling me we're averaging about... ...18 gold an hour alt parking. Uh, that's... Actually not real... That's not terrible. I... It's better than I thought it was going to be. Have to have to look at it thoroughly for the breakdown of where it's getting that value from. But we are going to look at one of my other daily things that I need to remember to do more, and that is home instance farming. I try to keep this available to anyone that wants to use it, but no one ever does. Um, for this, we use leftover frostbitten axes to get snowflakes. I forgot to buy these and mass and throw one on alt this year, so we're not going to be using them once we run out. These are still left over from 2022's Christmas. Uh, snowflakes are worth slightly more than leather because they're a guaranteed proc. Uh, they're worth slightly more than Volatile Magic, and I don't have a use for Snow Diamond, so more or less they just sit in my bank. And then I remember, oh yeah, I can actually do something with them, and by that point, you know, I don't have a desire to do anything with them. Normally I would have the alt account loaded up, and I would run it through, but I'm just going to do a quick run to add to efficiencies tracking. 
so we can see what a full day of this would be if you do it every day. Uh, you will notice I'm missing the bobble node from Super Adventure Box because I'm really bad at Super Adventure Box and I need to do it for the infusions this year but I don't know how I'm going to do that because I'll lose my mind running each one of those uh, tribulation modes 16 times. So uh, look forward to that in April. Those are not capped at once per day. The daily chest is but not the rewards for doing the tribulation. So if I actually get good at it, I can sit down and bang it out in a day. Uh, I probably won't get good enough at it to do that. Uh, I am missing the basic nodes because 800 gold or 800 gems for a copper, iron, and silver aren't worth it, nor are the lower level logs, nor are any of the lower level stuff right now. They're just fodder for glyph procs. And that's a that's an investment that doesn't get returned for a significant amount of time. Uh, I'm still probably going to do it next time around, so. Because Lunar New Year gave me a lot of money, and all I've bought with it so far is a mobile crafting station to replace my temporary uh, bank access. Now I have a permanent bank access. Homegrown nodes, uh, we're doing strawberry and cassava because I haven't sat down and made thousands of the ascended food stuff. I will be doing that at some point. The benefit to these nodes that you can purchase from the gardener over here uh, is that anyone else that comes into your instance and harvest them People that come into your instance cannot harvest your ascended plants. So if I were to run, say, all of my alt accounts through here, which I will never do because that's ridiculous, uh, they could all benefit from it and you would actually see your return on stuff significantly faster. But I wouldn't wish that on anyone really and I'm not going to do it to myself uh, chili pepper is basically pointless but it exists and we got five volatile magic out of it eternal ice uh, one of the best resources currently in the game it turns into volatile magic which turns into anything you need it to be trophies it can be leather if you're really hurting on leather uh, I would suggest looking at the best return and then selling that and buying the leather but uh, if you've seen my harvesting tool glyph you know I don't actually follow that most of the time so you do you uh, I'm not gonna judge because I'd have to look at myself and judge myself for the amount of time that I'm putting in to farming pointless currencies that can one day be enough of a currency combined to do something minor. And it's a little bit of a depressing thought here on a Sunday afternoon. Just wait till Wizard Vault resets, friends. It'll get even more depressing. I can be like, Bar, how are you not doing things with your life? And I can be like, I wish I knew, friends. Wish I knew. Uh, I totally missed the bandit chest in here. It can hide in a couple different spots. In Divinity's Reach, it can be here, between these houses. It can be... Down at the end of this road, by this building right here, it can be next to our bandit friends and the 
char salvage pile right over here. It can be down one of two nondescript streets. Either here or right in here. Or it can be right here, and I guess we did get it, but that's a spot it can be. If I had the other tree nodes, they would be down in this area. I believe the basic cloth and leather racks are along the pavement here. I don't, I don't think they're over by the advanced ones. And then we're missing the uh, Biora Marches node, which would sit right here and would give you a currency that has absolutely no value other than the volatile magic. I don't, I don't think by the time you can actually, by the time you as a player could actually afford 50 gold for it, I don't think you have any use for the currency. I'm not sure I've ever had any use for the currency beyond what you can get just doing the maps. I don't really understand why they bothered uh, with the chili node and with that node, uh, but they just don't have anything worth buying. If there was some, if you could trade in chilies for volatile magic packs or the unbound magic packs, uh, they'd be great. Uh, people would love chilies, but you can't. So, why even bother? If you exit to desktop without leaving your home instance, or exit to character select when you log in, you'll be right outside the door. Uh, anyone that's in the instance with you will have a few seconds to get out, or they will be booted back to where they zoned in. And then the last thing, well, two more things. One's kind of pointless. I believe on this character, I still have my gobblers set up. I don't. Uh, he was for about a year, the character set up to use them. Let me see where they are, because I think I moved them somewhere with the intent to... remember where I put them. And I didn't. I am checking efficiency, because that's the only way I know how to track things easily. Uh, this is what I get for not being prepared. Uh, you get to hear me ramble some more. Uh, please enjoy the total disaster that is Bar's Bank. Okay, I moved it to the other ranger. I believe she's also parked in the flex. There we go. One thing you have to remember if you have a character set up for doing this is to not press deposit all because then you'll be disappointed I forget this 
once a month or so and get very disappointed with myself. So I have to manually deposit flax seeds. I believe we have more of the fun stuff to blow up. So we'll go grab it out of the bank. I'm tired of Mistlock. Uh, it's a great hub location if you're not wanting to keep jade buffs. But since it's considered part of the mists, uh, you actually do lose your jade battery charges and your jade buffs. Uh, so probably 1,000 Seas Pavilion if it goes back on sale, I need to pick up. Because that has different ports and can go to any fishing spot, I believe. Which is nice. Uh, the PvP and Worldview Worlds ones have the same problem. I have a Captain's Airship Pass. The problem is uh, that's an actual location in the world. Did I not have... That might have been the other account. I'm smart. Okay. Well... Imperial Fragments, Piles of Bloodstone Dust, and Dragonite Orb. Once you stop needing Vision Crystals, and you stop needing Guild Hall upgrades, if you're building your own Guild Hall, which I don't recommend, it's a terrible, terrible waste of mats. Uh, you have Star of Gratitude, which blows up Imperial Fragments. You have Huerta and Madri, who can blow up Bloodstone Dust. You have Princess, who eats Dragonite Orb. You have your Volatile Singularity, which eats Volatile Magic, and then your Gleam of Sentience eats a combination of any of the two mats or your Unbound Magic and gives you Fluctuating Mass. Uh, each one of the things these produce will give you one unidentified gear and other stuff. Uh, Herta can potentially give you a vial of liquid aurelium. I don't know what the drop rate is exactly, but it's terrible. Uh, it eats an entire stack of bloodstone dust, which is great if you've been doing Reba for obsidian shards or chant bags, or you were opening divine envelopes and you said, ah, screw it, I'll just do the meta a few times. Uh, I do it sometimes specifically for... being lazy and getting a bunch of champion bags to open. Uh, you can get some of the rare exotics out of the specific champ bags that drop in the silver waste. You can't get Crustacea or the other ocean themed one, but you can get, I believe, Anton's boot blade, uh, all of the bandit skins for a 20 slot bag collection, and a couple other things from there that are in the a couple of the weapon skins are in the 40 to 50 gold range to finish treasure to finish not treasure hunter but the the one that lets you eat karma the karma converter uh, that's on the next character and the last character we're going to look at uh, the rest of them the rewards are kind of bad uh, you can get unidentified die packs which won't give you any great dies uh, Star Gratitude can give you a Christmas gift when you open its box. Uh, each one will, each one of Star of Gratitude, Madri, and Princess will let you click it between three and six times a day. It's random. Gleam of Sentience, you can use each option six times a day. So you can eat 300 of each mat and then 900 fluctuating, 900 uh, unbound magic for fluctuating mass. I don't eat the Volatile or Unbound Magic with it. I just use it to eat the excess Fragments and Bloodstone Dust as I reach uh, caps on those. Uh, I will sometimes let my inventory fill two or three rows before I bother. Then I'll open those bags in stacks. Uh, it's a small return on currency that otherwise isn't worth anything or is only worth crafting certain consumables that make a very low amount of gold and you don't want to bother with you don't always want to bother with maximizing your gold production because sometimes it takes too much time to actually maximize 
And then our last spot is in Grothmar Valley. Uh, do note there's other places you can go. Uh, the the entrance area in Saitung Harbor has a little garden that has four flax nodes, one to two trees, and then a couple other random plants. Uh, I had a few characters parked there early on in the expansion because it's once per map per... At the time, it was once per map per character per day. However, the map sizes were so small and people were rotating in and out of those maps so frequently that you could get four or five map changes an hour and farm a lot of materials there. And I believe they changed how those work. I think they they got nerfed to once per day period or according to fast it's once per account per day which just makes them totally pointless. Uh, in the Grothmar Valley area where you would come and turn in all your relics of the Connor for a chance at uh, the infusion. There's a number of chests. I just have a character there because I'll uh, every now and then do the metas here or buy keys. Uh, I use my actual raiding characters for some of these spots. Like this is my revenant if I need a revenant for anything raid wise or strike wise because it's easy to get into you just need the keys or someone to pull this door switch which will let you in eventually over there if you can't get in you put one of each key that lets you open the chest if you're already inside and you click on the chest uh, it'll tell you like oh I have the keys and I just didn't know I had to put them on the pedestals outside and you can click it and it'll open the chest for you as if you had put the keys in the pedestals uh, what this character mostly does is fractal reliquaries uh, plus five simple infusions are a just a way to slowly gain fractal relics over time i don't bother with anything else uh, you can get ascended rings for 25 relics which is fine you can get discounted uh, disa's experiment journals which give you spirit shards those can possibly be worth the 25 uh, I just like banking the simple infusion, saving up fractal relics, especially if you're working on any of the fractal titles. Uh, I've given up ever being fractal god because I don't like fractals anywhere near enough to do it. But if I was uh, simple infusions, I would get nothing but those. You can sell them for slightly more fractal relics than they cost uh, in Mistlock or in the Fractals of the Mist vendor themselves. You can buy keys. I would not spend 25 relics on a key. I would not spend 25 relics on a plus one Agony Infusion ever. They are ridiculously cheap. Uh, at one point they were three copper. I think they might be up to 10 copper now. But still, what are you doing? A uh, bag of gear that'll give you blue and green bags. I think there's an there's a chance you can get yellow bags out of one of the versions of these. And then every now and then there's a 20 slot box, which is a, a bag that will default to holding equipment. Uh, and that will come in any of the three rarities, rare, masterwork, or fine. And the big win besides that is the 20 slot or the 20 charge um, ascended salvage kit uh, which I have a few of stored in my bank I grab it every time it's available uh, it will those will always take up the same slot the simple infusions are in as will infused rings so if you see those you won't have the chance to buy the simple infusion uh, get those though get the bags get if you need 20 slot bags on any character Get the ascended salvage kits to blow up uh, any trinket type equipment and if you don't need research notes you can use it to blow up armor and weapons uh, 
I only ever stat change those and blow them up for research notes because variant weapons take a shitload of research notes and I'm assuming the armor will too. Uh, hopefully that was some sort of useful. Uh, it was an hour, so uh, thank you for paying any attention to that if you did. Let's take one last look at efficiency and see what it tells us we made this session. And if it is updated, it has a uh, largely because we spent the last bit talking about totally irrelevant things to making money and not actually doing anything besides opening a couple chests. Uh, it's showing we made about 11.4 gold an hour, which is not terrible. Uh, we were up to 19 when we were actually doing things that made us money. Then when we stopped, our money went down. So, hopefully you don't have that many alts to park. Hopefully you don't need to park that many alts. Hopefully you don't want to park that many alts. Uh, but if you do, that's how you can do it. Uh, thank you for checking this out. I will probably have one of these out for the Wizard's Vault reset. And then who knows what other topics I'll do. Uh, maybe collections? I will catch you around though.